Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Turn Zero. Last week, we built our Republican CIS list with Copes and Josh, and this week we're going to be making our Galactic Civil War list with Mike and Keegan. First up is the Imperials with Mike. Uh, Mike, what are you bringing? So I've decided to take it back a little bit to the summer when Legion just started and brought Emperor Palpatine. Outside of Iden Gunline, he's probably the most competitive Imperial list at this time. There's a you know a number of different factions and kind of little setups that you can run within the Imperial Army. Sure. And I think Palpatine and a couple of Shore Troopers is probably my favorite and my most effective. So when it comes to actually building Palpatine himself, I'm a firm believer in aggressive tactics. It's essentially 15 points to give your guards reliable one and to give literally anything in your list reliable one mm -hmm. because nothing on the Imperials surges to defense. Yep. So we're going with a pretty traditional Palpatine with anger, aggressive tactics, and force barrier, because similar to Obi-Wan and Count Dooku, barrier is just stapled to them. It's one to two hits a turn that you're just mm -hmm. taken away. And when you're combining that with Guardian, surging red saves from aggressive tactics, and the Medroid we'll get to, that's a pretty beefy list, and it's very difficult to get through. Yep. The core is pretty straightforward. Um, I like two shores, two mortars. It's kind of like having two and a half shore troopers for the price of two with pull the strings. You can really punish whatever has been left out in the open because mm -hmm. um, you can still double move shoot with the shores essentially. So it, it gives some flexibility. Sure. Um, for the fifth, I have a storm trooper with a med droid. It's kind of basic. You could do a snow trooper if you want to try to get the steady in there for the shot. But I've been burned too many times by a fresh short snow trooper not being able to get to evaporator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reed burned once. And that'll never happen to me again. We've got two snipers, the IRG with their staff, tenacity, and environmental gear. And the biggest thing that I want to talk about with this list is the 10th activation that I brought. It's an E-Web. It's naked. It's 55 points. It's a surge crit platform that, with aggressive tactics and barrier, essentially is always in cover three plus yep. surge to defense. Yeah. Sometimes it gets to shoot twice. Uh, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've actually played yeah. against each other with that. I've seen yeah, it. it's uh, yeah. I, anytime I see an eweb across the table, it gotta gotta kill it. <laughs> yeah, and see, that's what I was just about to get to. Yeah. Even though it's not really that durable and it's not expensive, everybody goes for it early. So you can almost play around your opponent by sticking an eweb in a slightly exposed position, barrier gardening it, and you can draw the opponent's fire towards that while you move your shores and your Palpatine the other way, and um, yeah. it gets pretty devastating quickly. And if it gets to shoot, it's five dice surge crit. It's essentially an ATST. Yeah, basically. Um, so uh, battle deck choices, though. What do you got? Battle deck is pretty easy for this one. Um, I have no bid, and I don't really plan on being blue player that often. Sure. Um, Palpatine actually likes being red player because he can deploy second. And the later you know I can deploy my power pieces, the better it's going to be. But I did make some choices. Um, we went with... Oh, that is wrong. We went with Sabotage and Moisture Evaporators, uh, Key Positions, Intercept, and Payload. Mm -hmm. I think this is a no-brainer. This is more of, if I do have Blue Player, what do I not want to play? I don't yeah. want to play Bombing Run. That's going to be tough. Um, it's probably a near auto-lose for mm -hmm. me, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, I really don't want to play Recover the Supplies or Breakthrough. I don't have a lot of mobility and a lot of units that can move and interact with objectives. So like getting a Mortar out to a box isn't going to do anything. Nope. Hostage exchange is an interesting idea. I think there's a little bit of play that you can do with hostage versus payload because I have payload in the deck and Palpatine's really good at clustering and forming this little ball that moves across the table. Yeah. But like I mentioned earlier, they're also not super mobile. So sometimes payload can be difficult with slowing mm -hmm. your opponent's cart. Hostage makes everything come to me, but I still think it's an auto lose against Republic because if something gets out there, and even CIS these days with the B2 spam, yeah. um, those B2s and anything that's scouting party back with Rex is, is going to win. So I, mm -hmm. I don't want a 50% auto lose rate. Yep. I already have that with Bombing Run. I don't need a second one. <laughs> uh, getting into deployments, um, pretty basic. Palp loves major offensive. He loves advanced positions because he gets the free moves. Rollout is essentially a poor man's major offensive. And then hemmed in starts him like range two and a half from the opponents. So you can drop a pretty yeah. significant even turn two and now you will die when the opponent doesn't expect it. And your opponent's now playing half their game without yeah. half their army. They have to recover from that. And that's like, <laughs> I was on the receiving end of that uh, about a week ago. 
and my opponent dropped Palpatine just right up in the front, and then turn one, and now you will die on uh, on Hemden. Double moved forward and eliminated four of my activations on the first turn. Rough. He lost Palpatine for it, but but uh, you have to yeah. respect the play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the conditions are pretty easy as well. Rapid reinforcements is a go-to. I can always delay with a mortar and e web, and it gives mm -hmm. me a you know a nice courage two unit to go out there. Um, clear conditions kind of helps everybody these days. And if I'm already going to be a disadvantage by being an Imperial, I don't want to give myself a further disadvantage. So mm -hmm. we'll keep the battlefield nice and neutral. Fortified positions is a tough one. It's not great for me because I really don't want to be giving you extra wounds via cover, but Palpatine is speed one. I can pull the strings on units and my guards do have environmental gear. Yeah. So those extra barricades aren't going to be as much of a, a concern. And then supply drop. I want to get the back to out there. I want to get the targeting scopes on Palpatine, the targeting scopes <laughs> on the shores. Yeah. It's pretty basic. The command hand also isn't much of a decision here. Um, you've got all three of Palpatine's cards, both generics, and then I do run coordinated fire because that turns pretty pretty nasty with the shore troopers in the E-Web. Yeah. And when you pull the strings on a shore that has a hot roll, spends a name, and has two left over, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you've essentially got that that two to three shore coordinated fire. Yeah. Shores hit pretty hard. They do. So when it comes to lists that I'm not looking forward to, though, um, I'm really hoping there's not a lot of staff or double AT spam. Um, even though I've got a lot of protection against the double AAT with Barrier yeah. and Guardian, they can hit me from really far away. Mm -hmm. And if they hit a sniper team, for example, I'm now quickly down activations. Mm -hmm. And, that's... and there's, the AATs have a lot of critical, so that's not really great for Palp because they can't yeah. Guardian. If you leave Palp in a position where an AAT can shoot him, um, he's not. The guards aren't going to help him much there, right? And it even takes away barrier to an extent because with yeah. critical two, you've essentially got a surge crit AAT, mm -hmm. and if you roll three crits in, I'm only barriering one away, and that sniper yep. team's still probably dead. Yep. So that's what I'm hoping for. Um, I've played against quite a few clone lists with this, and it hasn't been too much of a concern. Um, Rexstar is really tough to get through, but I don't expect to see that here. <laughs> so um, unless copes decides to roll like 90 percent on his defense dice again um i've got the obi-wan in the bag we'll see how sure. that goes uh and rebel wise i think palpatine matches up well against the rebels i've got a lot of long range dice and i can mm -hmm. i can kind of handle that outside of a double yeah you got a lot of range four and range five so mm -hmm. well uh i mean the list seems like a lot of fun um i faced i think the exact same list before and i can tell yeah. you it's uh, not easy to it's not easy to get damage through um so I can't wait to see uh, how it fares in the turn zero matchup. Uh, yeah, it so, should be fun. Yeah. So thanks for making the list, Mike. And we're going to switch gears to Keegan and the Rebels now. And we're back with Keegan, who's going to build our Rebel list. Um, Keegan, what are you bringing? Thanks, Nick. Uh, yeah, I... Uh... You know what? I think I'm starting to get a reputation for a certain kind of rebel list. So, <laughs> I, uh, I I I hate hate it when I get predictable. So I'm going to change it up just a little bit. Uh, I have been meaning and wanting to find an excuse to put Mandalorians on the table in some fashion, uh, and I just haven't. They, they always just fall right below the line of uh, it's not ready for me to do for Invader League or or sure. LPL or whatever else. But we're going to do it tonight. Uh, so I'm going to start from a core of uh, uh, I. Yeah, you know, I, I also like heroes, so I'm, I'm not doing anything too crazy. We're not doing generic Mandos. We're going full Clan Ren. Uh, so we'll start with Clan Ren. And uh, you can't do Clan Ren without Sabine, in my mind. Of so, not. Oh, so, no, yeah. So those two are joined at the hip uh, automatically. Mm -hmm. um, I, since I'm doing Clan Ren and I'm doing Sabine, I'm a, I'm a Darksaber player. And that's, that means I already have two units with Dauntless right there. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay a little bit predictable, and I'm gonna put Jin in there for that Courage Three bubble, uh, and some of her uh, command card tricks to help yeah. to help that out. So with that as my as my kind of core, I'm starting to think what else do I want to do, and what m most especially what am I worried about? Um, I've played against you enough <laughs> and Josh enough, and you know the the Invader League slate enough to, right now to be really worried about droids, uh, both in terms of the hit points that I have to chew through. And the effectiveness of that of those AATs in both the single and the double variety. So uh, r right now my list is lacking beefy, uh, beefy dice pools. Um, 
fortunately, I know a way that uh, I can get a solid six dice, usually without having to deal with cover and carry impact three with me on uh, almost every turn. And that's the magnificent, beautiful T-47 airspeeder. Uh, so we're, we are going to be doing a, a Mandalorian airspeeder and gin uh, base to this list. <laughs> what a what a pile of stuff. <laughs> I have uh, We've got a little Rogue One, a little Rebels, a little Empire Strikes Back. I yeah, I, this is this is the lost episode of Rebels between seasons three and four. I think. So, <laughs> um, at the list of the points are starting to fill up at this point. So, just to be sure that I don't uh, overspend and make an illegal list that I'm really happy with, and then I have to completely tear it down again i'm just going to drop three naked rebel troopers in to fulfill that yeah. core core requirement um so at this point we got Jin as the commander sabine is an operative i like her with the dark saber i also like loading sabine up um i like giving her the, the electro cord whip uh, uh sorry the electro grappling line and the personal combat shield uh it's one of those things where if i'm going to get be getting efficiency off of uh, recover. I want to get a lot of efficiency off it, and yeah. I want her to be flexible uh, to bring things. I really like that electro grappling line when I when I have to go face up against a lightsaber user uh, because mm -hmm. it, it it does a nice job pinning them in place. So I'm going to load her out and uh, top her off with situational awareness because with dodges and nimble and vigilance, uh, there's it, it's, I just want to be sure she's blocking everything that's coming Always in. Always has a dodge suspend. Always has a dodge, and, and it's. It can be spent on pretty much anything. Yep. Similarly, the uh, the Mandalor the Clan Ren, I'm going to uh, Ursa and Tristan are mandatory, of course, uh, but I'm going to put situational awareness on them um, because I'm going to put vigilance in the list. Uh, I also want to put HQ uplink on them uh, because while I'm not going crazy with my veterans lists and HQ uplinks where I can get perfect <laughs> order control, I still want to. one in there. Yeah, I still want to have order control yeah. on a unit that's it's going to be important. Mm. Sometimes timing is going to be important. Of course. Yeah. So those guys are going to top out at about 122 uh, with that. Uh, Sabine loaded out, uh, as I described her, is about 152. Looking at the airspeeder, Wedge, I think, at one point is an auto-include. The Power Harpoon is mm -hmm. an auto-include to start. Um, and, and I really like the comms jammer. I talked earlier about how uh, the droid list is what I'm worried about uh, as a weakness. Uh, in addition to the dice, being able to ram a comms jammer down their throats uh turn two or three can can sometimes be make the real difference uh and, and throw off some battle plans uh so that loadout on the t47 comes in at an absolutely glorious 136 points <laughs> for six I, uh, dice critical i can't i can't attest that the droid army does not like that airspeeder with the comms jammer <laughs> i will yeah. tell you that yeah. uh, i do not like it <laughs> and I'll say after uh, after a year of flying it around uh, again recently, I finally have remembered that I have the comms jammer on there pretty reliably. So <laughs> I used to forget it all the time. Uh, so I've got I've got the dice in the comms jammer. I've got some flexibility and some coolness in Sabine and the clan run, and I've got the courage level that I want out of Jin. Mm -hmm. um, ra what I need now is to round it out. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to stick with the naked rebel troopers to give myself some good, uh, points. I played around with, did I want to throw some scanners in there? Did I want to throw some DLT twenties in there? Uh, and, and I'd like to, but what I also want to do more is I actually want to make this a little top heavier. So I'm going to throw Leia and R2 in, make it a two commander and two, uh, two operative list. Uh, and what I'm really doing here is I'm bringing some, some sweet command cards that I can use. So on, yeah. Um, R2, I'm going to throw the comms relay to get some flexibility in what I'm doing with him. Uh, and then uh, both Leia and Jin are going to get Vigilance, which is going to enable yeah. me to power dodges on Sabine and Clan Ren yep. the entire game. The entire game with situational awareness. They, yep, they yep. always have a dodge. They always spend the dodge. Yep. Right. Uh, and with Jin ability to infiltrate, her primary infiltrate role is not going to be any of the crazy tricks that <laughs> I've tried in the past. It's the forward <laughs> positioner to be able to provide that vigilance forward as the yep. speed three mo units move the start up. Of the game. Uh, yeah, yep. move up fast. So uh, now it's only going to be able to do one. I got to be smart about what I'm doing. Keep if I want to keep those dodges on, I got to keep Leia back. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of mix and match I can do. Uh, sorry, move Leia forward or keep one of either clan runner speed back mm -hmm. but a lot of mixing and matching and flexibility i can do on that um let's see so i talked about r and then r2 in there r2 and leia each have command cards that when issuing orders allow me to get an extra free speed one move out of two units yeah. 
Uh, that's why the conference relay is going on there for R2. Uh, so I can, uh, I can, yeah, the, the, both uh, Sabine and Clan Ren move at speed three, uh, eight inches at a time. This is going to give me an additional eight inches per unit throughout the game. Um, in over two speed speed two moves that can be a huge difference on something like bombing run or recover where i'm just trying to get away or get into a spot uh and that is uh i think that's going to round it out i think i've talked about everything oh did, did i mention i was throwing situational awareness on gin uh you didn't but okay. that makes sense yeah so what uh, without situational awareness on gin that list is coming in at about 780 uh so a nice 20 point bid i am uh i'm a big believer that i'm in most cases not going to outbid a droid the droid lists that are out there right now this is the one exception where i'm actually gonna i think it's a good enough list where it is there's not a material ton of difference that i can make tweaking some things out to fill in those 20 points so going deep for that uh for that big bid and try to get blue player with this list is uh, is going to be my priority. Awesome. I've taken a little bit of a risk, I think, with that extra two points on Jin, but I've seen uh, situational awareness with her dug in and her nimble, uh, especially once Danger Sense starts stacking up. And, yeah. and if things are going my way, uh, she can be a real pain in the ass on a center objective. And if with, you need her to, she can keep her dodge too. 100%. Yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. Especially if I've got a bad day on Sabine or, or Clan Ren and they mm -hmm. melt under some, some dice, uh, yeah. she, she's a fantastic vigilance target. Vigilance really feels like the upgrade that like rebels were waiting for 100%. for a long time. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it's I've opened, been it's opened things up a lot absolutely. for my list building for sure. Yeah, yeah, I've been playing with it solid. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much an auto include, and especially yep. the the lists I play. Uh, I'll put it just on Jin just to keep just to do a turn one uh, quick thinking and keep a yeah. dodge and situation worse on her the entire rest yep. of the game. Uh, so that's it. A nine activation, seven hundred and eighty-two list. Its power is around uh, uh, Mandalorians, uh, both operative and special forces variety, and the uh, and the airspeeder, and then yep. some some uh, some tricksy command cards. Yep. Um, so I'll jump into those uh, right now. Four four heroes. It's be tough decisions here. A lot of tough decisions. <laughs> a lot of tough decisions. Four characters here. Uh, yeah. Uh, the way that I tackled this is I wanted to look at the priority uh, of what I was getting in there. Um, I, I was when I was building it, I was uh, go, I was simultaneously looking at some of the upgrades as well as the command cards. So that's where we get com I decided to go with comms relay on R two. Uh, that's going to give me an op ad, an opportunity to give R two the boost uh, in speed on blast off. But I could also th um, on a critical one pip turn, I could throw that order onto the air speeder to capture the the, uh, the first part mm -hmm. of a last first play. Um, uh, so blast off is in there. The other one pips are a hard decision. Uh, if anyone's watched me play, you know I love my uh, rebellious from Jin, but I, I I had to I had to be honest with myself on this list. <laughs> Jin is a positional piece. It's that courage three bubble. It's that vigilance holding there. I'm I'm not actually building this list for her to be a a, a hands on damage dealer uh, on this one. So I I passed up rebellious and I actually passed up coordinated bombardment to get explosions. Um, I think I think explosions uh, uh, against the list that I'm worried about is a nice is a nice player <laughs> knocking out some of those uh, it, maybe not many of them but <laughs> ticking off a couple of B1 minis is I mean, uh, is valuable. Well played explosions can really uh, harm yeah the B1 swarm absolutely you really can eat them up yeah so that's what I settled on for, on for my one pips sure. um, two pip Leia's. Uh, uh, Leia's two pip is an auto include. No time for sorrows. Uh, I talked earlier about yep. getting those free speed one moves. That's just a no brainer. Yep. Uh, I started off putting uh, trust goes both ways because I really love teamwork uh, onto Sabine, teamwork onto Mandalorians. Sure. Uh, but then I ended up backing off and going with symbol of rebellion. I mentioned earlier about getting that recover efficiency and with the things okay. that I have on there, having an opportunity to throw some uh, uh, recharge yeah. Sabine clear her an extra chance to clear her of suppression and get that whip or that shield back uh feels too good to pass up right now in a list that's mm -hmm. not terribly dependent on order control yep um and finally uh complete the mission is all is an auto include still for me uh Jin's card uh throw some extra suppression out there and also just make anyone with an order unable to be suppressed and panicked so strong yeah so strong hugely impressive even on dauntless units uh it's uh 
that that's just going to be that extra turn where if I need to do something that first action, uh, yeah. I I've got that opportunity. Uh, and then I'm going to round it out with smoke screen because that's R2's uh, free move card. Uh, so he's going to he's going to throw it to a trooper unit and then he's going to use the cons relay to throw the order on someone else. Yeah. Uh, so that probably the Mandalorians and Sabine. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. Uh, that's a list that is, it's about mobility. It's about getting extra mobility out of it. It's a lot of range two fire <laughs> when I look at it. Um, oh, I did have the jetpack rockets on uh, Clan Ram. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that, that's a nice for the nice alpha strike. Yep, that bumped it up. Yep. So. Uh, what do we yep. got for the battle deck, though? Battle deck, uh, there's a couple of auto-includes. Uh, I think when I've got R2 in there, uh, throwing in disarray and battle lines is important. I've got enough... Uh, commanders and operatives that i i'm not that worried about spreading my forces out and what's most likely to happen at this point is if i get disarray and a, and a favorable deployment r2 is going to do his r2 thing i'll yeah. i'll 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 let myself be that kind of a player <laughs> if, if it lands on that um advanced positions i'm already building this to take advantage of extra moves so giving everyone an extra move sounds pretty good to me uh, and then I think major offensive is my other is my other good play. It's a nice rounded out setup. Uh, for objectives, uh, recover the supplies. Uh, I've got I've got gin in there if I want to do a super aggressive uh, box grab. But with this list and without the order control or rebellious, I'm probably not actually doing an infiltrate box grab on this. Sure. I'm probably putting her in a safe position uh, to cover uh, with her bubble and then using the Mandalorians. Yeah, um, using the yeah those speed three jetpack guys with a. Yep. Yeah, who can just grab the box and yep. turn around the next turn. Yep. yep, yeah. And that's where that HQ uplink, that's mm-hmm. where the extra uh, command cards for Sabine come in to really lock that in. Uh, similarly, bombing run, I've got an airspeeder and two speed three units with jump. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is a this is a list that I would love to get yeah. bombing run on, even more than my mm-hmm. other bombing run lists. Yeah. Uh, Along the same lines, breakthrough I think is a solid. When I take bombing run for the list I take, I think breakthrough is a good a good yep. push, and especially with R two in there to get the double points. Uh, and finally, I think I had a hard time thinking of my fourth one. I, intercept is what I landed on. I think that there's things I can do, especially with the speed three and the jump, about d- dipping in and dipping out of that uh, yep. contested objective uh, on, on off turns and, and being using the harassing for that. Yeah. Uh, Conditions. I don't have snipers, and I'm not bringing coordinated bombardment, so limited viz is an auto include to get uh, to get that movement. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Similarly, I've got R2 in there, so hostiles an auto include to get that suppression on them early. I could conceivably just drop my uh, complete the mission and uh, leave leave a suppression on him the whole time. I've got enough suppression mitigation between Leia's Inspire, uh, Sabine's Recover card, and uh, Jin's uh, mm-hmm. cards that I'm not actually that worried about too much suppression. Uh, loading up on my units i love supply drop for anything with rebel heroes so that's that's in there uh and i basically if i'm not going to get one of those three i'll take uh i'll take clear conditions so yeah go into an rbq trying something new trying to catch some people off off guard with some ability a nine activation uh clan ren sabine airspeeder list seems like a lot of fun (laughs) uh i can't wait to see it in the matchup coming up absolutely um and with that, that's it for this week, everyone. Next week, we're going to have our first turn zero matchup. Come back to see which of the months list got paired against each other and how our players will react. Have a good one.